What's Woo! happening, guys? How's it going? And the one and only Alan Foltz. So, hey guys. Um, you guys have got some really cool stuff, and I gotta say, this is a new release for the show today. These three right here. Yes, sir. And these things, as soon as we got them in just a couple of days ago, I was waiting with bated breath just to see them because I, I, you had told me about them back in December, and I was like, man, I can't, I can't feel this with through pictures. I want to, I want to have it in hand. And as soon as we opened it up, I was speechless, like literally. And I haven't actually bought a new knife for myself in a really long time. This one is mine now um, because I bought it because, I mean, I see a lot of knives on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's, it's kind of gotten to that point where it's, it's kind of hard to wow me. It's kind of hard to feel that feeling again from that first time. But um, it's, it's almost like a drug. And it's, it's hard to get that, that sense again. But I tell you what, that absolutely did it. And um, Alan, you have been a mainstay as far as designers goes, and really a huge name. I mean, one of our, <laughs> two of our top five fixed blades for the year 2023 was the Minimalist. And it stands to reason, it's a phenomenal design, but it's unobtrusive. So let's talk about Bryce, from your perspective, what it's like bringing on designers like Alan, yeah. and uh, then from you, like what it's like designing these, and, and how do you keep it fresh for you? Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's our bread and butter. We get to work with people like Alan, a lot of the greatest designers in the world. We get to bring their custom designs to you guys at an affordable price, which is really awesome. The little Minimalist, the Humble Minimalist has been one of the, the staples, a real pillar in the knife world. It's the neck knife. Um, with the little grooves and all the different blade shapes that have come along with it. And what's been really fun is to see outside of that work. I, you know, Alan's done a lot, obviously, with the Minimalist series. But his uh, folding knives, too, are just really cool. So it was really exciting to lead off with uh, the ritual back in the day, the big blue and white ritual. And uh, big knife, but really fun, too, to come back and shrink it down a little bit, make it a little bit more uh, pocket-friendly, but uh, with some really cool new designs. and. That stay really true to Alan's work as well. I think that's one cool thing too, is you can see a custom versus our version right there. Right. I love the similarities, and that's that's when I get really excited is if we can get as close as we can to all these designers' work. So, really exciting. So, Alan, let me ask you, what how, what's it like? What's your thought process like when you go through designing? I mean, we know the backstory, and we did an interview with you a few years ago. Um, the backstory on how you came about. Uh, basically using scraps because you wanted to utilize every every piece in you can, your shop. You can, you can say it, I'm cheap. <laughs> so so what, what's it like going to this other end of the spectrum, basically? Because this was something that I don't think anybody can honestly say they expected to see from you as a designer. Um, but what's it like going from something like that to this and then actually making that progression to something like that? Well, the... For me, the, the minimalist was a was out of the norm to me. Right. Most people know me for that, but it's not really what I started out as. What I really right. started out as was one of a kind folders and fixed blades. So the minimalist to me was really my tr my first true knife into pure use. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't designed to be anything more than you know a handy tool to be there when you needed it. Right. It, it was supposed to be minimalistic. And in art, that's you know taking it to the least common denominator. You take it to all it needs is an edge. All it needs is a point and the rest is all good. Well, the designer in me likes the other end of it too. So I do a lot of, a lot of teaching to, for other makers, a lot of classes and things like that. And the ritual was designed in a class and I was teaching design and how to push their boundaries. So it was one of those things where, you know, I was trying to teach them that big isn't always big. You know, curvy isn't always curvy. Right. But you want to take things to extremes. So I took that knife to an extreme and for me it was, an extreme size, it was it was flashy, it was everything else. The original kept those same ivory and blue colors, but it was all fully engraved. Right. You know, it was everything else, but it was it was a big knife and it was it was the opposite of the minimalist. It wasn't non obtrusive. It wasn't right. <laughs> it wasn't kind of low key. It was flashy and it was big. Yeah. But you know, something about how it was received, it was different enough that people received it and started carrying it and liked it enough. I wanted to bring that back a little bit. You know, I don't, I don't want to take the style away from it, but I want to take the obtrusiveness. I want to take right. the, the, 
non-refined, just kind of animalistic quality that a big knife has that way. Yeah. You know, every, everybody, CRKT and me, when that came out and everybody opens that for the first time, there's just this little <laughs> primal giggle. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And it was big and everything else. Well, I want to bring that back into the EDC level. Yeah. You know, I want to bring that, anybody that likes that shape, well, here's something that's pocket friendly. Here's something that's, you know, a little easier to carry. And CRKT really stepped it up with the, the materials and everything on these high scale models that really kind of echoes, as you can see, where I come from, my custom, which, which I call the right, and they call the ritual compact. Right. So, you know, my custom right, in almost the same materials as theirs, you can see how, how much they, they played off of how I usually make a knife. Right. By doing this smaller model. So I think it really kind of tied the two together. You know, brought it into a different level. And having it at the high level with the Damascus, and then at the, at the lower level with the copper and the micarta and the regular steel, I think it, it just broadens its audience a lot. You know, knives don't have to be serious. They can be right. fun. Exactly. You know what I mean? And I think they're bringing the fun down to size where more people will carry it and more people have fun with it. That actually brings something to mind to me that I didn't realize in myself. So I came up in a time when United Cutlery and Gil Hibben fantasy daggers were my favorite thing. Like that's, that's really what, what got me yep. into it as a kid. Um, and, and seeing these knives in movies. And so now, actually, when I open this one, I, I guess subconsciously, that's kind of what I felt, was that yeah. kind of same sense of joy and jubilation. Um, yeah, there, there, like, there's something about a knife pushing the boundaries of just the knife. Yeah. That really brings it into a different context for people. Right. You know, I, I think, you know, you got to look at all those iconic things that you saw in movies as a kid. You know, what do you see? You, you saw all the horror movies, you saw all the action flicks, you saw, saw Stallone and Schwarzenegger and right. everything else, and they all had that iconic knife. But they weren't run of the mill. There were spikes and there were finger guards and there were you know, whole lines of makers that just made those art knives and those really flashy pieces that they showed in knives. And everybody kind of cues that into that time in their life. And it was fun and it was, you know, kind of carefree. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so these things we use as tools can can tie in a lot of things for people years down the line. So, and I, I think it's really important to kind of embrace that. You know, not everything has to be pure serious utility. Right. You know what I mean? You can have some style and some flair and some, you know, some some jovial attitude towards yeah. it. Yeah. Little and did I know when I was watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was just planning the seeds of my future career. You know, <laughs> that's what we were doing. And I want to I want to touch on too some of your customs that you've got here with you as well, um, like this right here. Let's let's talk about these materials, and and what went into making this. Okay, well that that that's a new model. The two that are right there in front of you are the number one and number two. Everything that's on the table at this point, I, I brought to try to show people how it goes from custom to production, and you know to to treat this just like any other show. I love bringing unique pieces, and I love to. These are all hand built, hand cut. Yeah. Uh, I built two of that model. You know, I just like to try it out. So I, I go through a lot of designs. Most folders that I make never make it to production. They never right. make it past what I'm building. But, you know, a prototype for me might be two or three knives because making one is just, it's not efficient. Yeah. So I'll make a couple knives, a couple three, and I try to mix them up. I try to do something kind of base model. I try to do something in Damascus, Damascus, Mother of Pearl, fancy carbon fibers. Right. You know what I mean? Just to see where the knife takes me. Because some knives, like the, the right or the ritual, it can go from plain to fancy. Right. And, it, and it, the design carries that off. Mm -hmm. Some things you get too fancy on the materials and the whole design just kind of turns to nothing. It doesn't, doesn't hold its worth in those kind of materials. Yeah. So I like to do some variety. Yeah. And, you know, at shows, if you ever find me at a custom knife show, there's one of a kinds all over my table. Because that's what I love to do. Right. Doing the same thing over and over again to somebody that likes to create and likes to design new things is just like it's being chained to that bench, you know. So to me, the, the funkier I can make it and the more different variety I can make, the more sane I stay in my shop. So. <laughs> and I know it varies from one to another, but what does the timeline look like from like initial conceptualizing the design to actually, you know, putting it on paper to actually getting it in material and, and in hand? Well, you know, I'm kind of old school when it comes to that, so everything that I, everything starts with paper designs with me. Yeah. So, like the, the ritual, I said before that it was built in a class. So in three days, I had that knife built with other people that I was teaching to build a folder in that amount of time. 
but my process is, is pretty nailed down. My shop is set up to where I can walk from one tool to the next, and I don't have to set up anything to do that. So I can go down the line and make a knife relatively quickly, along with teaching other people how to do it. Right. And I always like to build while I'm teaching. So I've gotten a one-of-a-kind folder down to right around three days while I'm teaching other people. So I start off right with them. They design what they want to build, and I design what I want to build. And three days later, they're walking out of there with something finished, heat treated, and everything else. But they're learning along the way. And I think that's important to get, yeah. get your hands in it, get other people involved, you know, really kind of, you know, spread to the community that, 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 that anyone can do this. Yeah. And I also like to, when I teach, I teach to the lowest denominator. So I teach to a guy that's got a belt grinder and a drill press. Yeah. Those are the two tools I use to build all these knives. Right. No milling machines, no CNC, nothing fancy. All these were hand cut and built from scratch. And, you know, timelines can vary depending on materials. Right. But once you get your process down, the materials don't slow you down at all. And I can't say that I'm shocked after, especially knowing where this comes from, how efficient your shop runs. Like you said, you, you've got it set up to where it's peak efficiency, where you just walk from one yeah, station yeah. to the next. And, and, all, and all that was learned from mistakes. Yeah. All that was learned from folders used to take me a week. Right. You know, it's okay, what am I doing wrong? You know, in, in any, anything can be taught from a mistake. You right. know that. So, you know, the minimalist was one of those things that was, that was built like that, but minimalists are super short time frame to build because yeah. I built so many of them over the years. Right. You know, that you, you start to see where, where your time's all, all caught up, and that's where your problem lies. That is awesome. Alan, thank you so much. Thanks, Bryce, you guys are awesome, and uh, we are super excited about these new knives.